fellow seekers, heretics, and guildmates. Welcome back to Idea Sex, where we take an analytical lens to mysticism and spirituality. My name is Kiara, the Mad Witch, and today we are talking about how New Age beliefs are like a modern mythology. And so let's start here. What we are living through right now has been prophesized about on either side of the Atlantic in cultures all over the world uh, throughout history. This is sometimes called, this is commonly called the Great Awakening. And uh, according to the Woo Woo New Age people, what we're seeing happen in the world right now is a timeline split where one group of people is awake and the other group of people is asleep, also called 3D and 5D, um, stuck in the matrix and unplugged. And whenever I hear this stuff, right, people talking about great awakenings and uh, timeline splits in the golden age of humanity, I'm like, wow, it sounds like a modern mythology. And I used to think our modern mythologies were like our superhero movies and our fantasy novels that become big franchises and that our pantheons were like celebrities, right? Those are our idols, so to speak. But when I started exploring the new age stuff, I realized that this disorganized non-religion has all the markers of a modern mythology. I remember landing in Sedona and looking around at the people here and they were all talking about like ascended masters and legions of angels and our intergalactic alliances with extraterrestrials and they would never shut up about their third eyes and I was like, what is it with these people? Why do they think they have three eyes? Also, who am I to judge? I have three nipples. That's the medical term. Like literally, it's part of my witch inheritance. You wanna see? Take a look, take a look. Tis the mark of the beast. And when they suckle demons. If you have a mark like that along this, I think it's this line of lymph nodes, uh, then it's clinically a third nipple. Third nipple, that's your clinical diagnosis. It's also a great reason to burn you at the stake a few hundred years ago. But now, how interesting that things like witchcraft are trending, meditation is trending, ascension is trending, theosophy is trending, and they're all coming together in like this strange uh, spiritual free-for-all soup. Now, to people who aren't, awake yet to the, to the mystical underpinnings of life. They're not connected to spirit, at least not on a conscious level. They look at all of this stuff and they're like, fucking hippies. And this used to annoy me because I was like, hippies just sounds like your catch-all term for things you don't understand. Like lumping the witches in with the yogis, in with the theosophs, in with the new agers. And okay, ideologically, there can be a lot of overlap between these things, but you know, for example, witchcraft predates theosophy by literal millennia. But it's all the same to people who believe the human experience is limited to, I don't know, eating, making a living, fighting, f***ing, and dying. And like I said, this used to annoy me, but then I realized they're right. This synthesis of ideas that's coming together on the outside, right? These things look different, but really they're all paths leading us to the same place. It's like every spiritual practice or tradition or whatever, it's like a spoke on a wheel pointing inward to a central truth. You follow any one path long enough, we kind of end up somewhere similar. And so I think what we are seeing being created right now, what we could call new age hippie shit, is actually the realization of what Joseph Campbell called a modern mythology. So in this video, we're going to take a look at what mythology is and why it's so important, how new age beliefs are creating a modern mythology, and how the synthesis of science and technology with wisdom teachings is key to unlocking the golden age. First, let's consider what mythology is and why it's important. And we're gonna look at this through a very like high level Campbellian lens. So in a nutshell, Joseph Campbell was a professor at Sarah Lawrence and he founded the field of comparative mythology. He gave us the hero's journey, AKA the monomyth, which is the only reason we have Star Wars. So very important stuff, but perhaps the most important thing Campbell gave us was an understanding that myths are not just these relics that we should relegate to the past, right? They're not these um, made up make-believe stories. I mean, they are, but they are more than that. Myths are the collective stories that human beings tell each other in order to make sense of the human experience. And in Power of Myth, Campbell writes, myths and dreams come from the same place. They come from realizations of some kind that have then defined expression in symbolic form. And the only myth that is going to be worth thinking about in the immediate future is one that is talking about the planet not the city, not these people, but the planet and everybody on it. Okay, let's unpack this a sentence at a time. Myths come from realizations of some kind that have then defined expression in symbolic form. In other words, myths are created when humans take their collective understanding of something and stick it in a metaphorical story. 
The only myth that is going to be worth thinking about in the immediate future is one that is talking about the planet, not the city, not these people, but the planet and everybody on it. Back when we were not a globalist society, uh, we had all these little individual pockets of myth, right? The pantheons of our ancestors, and these could be based on country, they could be based on region, they could even be hyper-local, like unique to our little villages of 150 people. But these days, all our world's cultures are connected through trade, through communication, through technology. And so Campbell is saying that a modern mythology would have to speak to that interconnectedness and the planet. Back when humans had to worry about being eaten by lions, or we, we didn't know where lightning came from then, it made sense to tell stories about <clears throat> lion gods and lightning gods. It made sense when we were living in these sort of siloed cultures, it made sense that we had our own smaller scale mythologies. But now, as we, like our species has expanded, and sort of merged in a way, right? Like everything is very interconnected through technology and communication. Um, those old mythologies have become outdated. Sorry, Zeus. Mythology itself isn't outdated, right? I think it's a very necessary construct because it's how humans have always made sense of the human experience. And myths, are they are our attempt at answering the questions of the collective. Today, the collective isn't a village of 150 people though, right? It's a globe of seven billion. And that's why Campbell says that a modern mythology has to account for the planets and all people on it. Religion attempted to do this for a while, but it primarily failed because uh, religion tends to be divisive, even if that's not what the teachings really are or what they were intended to be. Uh, when an institute becomes very dogmatic and they're like, our way is the right way and every other way is wrong, we're automatically creating an in-group and an out-group, and something that's that structured can't account for the diversity of 7 billion unique people, right? And this may come as a surprise to anyone who proselytizes that their way is the right way, but you will never, ever get 7 billion people to agree on any one thing. The second reason why I think religion can't be a modern mythology is because when scripture is interpreted literally, it doesn't play well with the knowledge we've gained from science. And I think this is part of why people are less and less interested in going to church, to temple, to wherever. So piggybacking off of what Campbell said, which is that uh, a modern mythology needs to account for uh, the people and the planet, I think a modern mythology also needs to account for science and technology because they're such a fundamental part of our society. So enter the hippie shit. Unlike organized religion, right, which tells us that we all kind of have to conform to the same ideas, New Age ideas are inherently diverse. Um, how many people do you know who identify as spiritual, not religious, right? A lot. And to me, that's a, that, that is like very indicative of New Age. That being said, I think it can also encompass people who are devoutly religious. But when I think of people who are New Age, they, they look like all different kinds of things. It can be the person who swears by their astrological chart and their magic healing crystals. Uh, it can be some someone who uh, believes in intergalactic alliances and that we're making contact and maybe they channel aliens. It can be someone who doesn't do any of the woo-woo stuff and just meditates, loves their neighbors as they love themselves, and believes all of humanity is connected. And so with all of this new age stuff, right, there are no formal texts or teachers. I mean, yeah, we've got the Deepak Chopras and we have the Eckhart Tolle's of the world, but no one is putting it forward as like, this is the person who has the truth and this is the, the book you need to read or the thing you need to do. Um, the key thing with this new emerging brand of, of spiritual practice is that people kind of walk their own path and encounter all of these different ideas and have to test those ideas against their own inner guidance, their own inner knowing, their inner teacher. And and the great irony is that by not imposing a set of beliefs on people, people actually come to very similar conclusions, right? It's never gonna be 100%, but I would say a lot of us arrive at uh, in the neighborhood of these four things. One, there's more to reality than the physical world we perceive. Two, we are all connected through something. Three, love is a key ingredient. And four, death is probably not annihilation. From paganism to Abrahamic scripture, from yoga to homeopathy, psychedelics to a near-death experience, wherever you start, we tend to end up circling around similar ideas. And again, it's never gonna be 100% of people, but a lot of people who are into the hippie shit come to conclusions along these lines. So here's my train of thought. A collective understanding of something is like the seed of a myth. A lot of people walking any kind of spiritual path today have similar realizations. Throughout history, people have taken those understandings, those realizations, and they have packaged them into these symbolic stories. And so the question becomes, 
how are these realizations being expressed today? And I think we're seeing it in this new emerging brand of spirituality. Call it new age, call it ascension, call it hippie shit, whatever. Let's use the criteria we previously talked about. A modern mythology must account for all people, account for the planet, and account for science and technology. First, accounting for all people. So new age is, like I said, it's inherently diverse because it's a melting pot. It's cherry picking from all the world's uh, religions, mythologies, occult teachings, uh, esoteric practices, philosophies, wisdom traditions, transcendental psychology, right? It all kind of comes together in this magical soup and anyone can be included. And so it doesn't run into the issues that traditional institutionalized religion does because it's not putting any one thing forward as absolute truth. It's more like an invitation to like, okay, come find out what's real. In fact, one belief that I would say is pretty widely accepted is the idea that we all come from one source, but we're unique expressions of that source. And it's good to um, celebrate, right, the differences. I like to say that diversity is part of God's gift to life because it gives life its richness and its texture, right? Our similarities are what make us human, but our differences are what make this an adventure. Second, accounting for the planet. So this is an idea you will often hear floated in these new age spiritual circles is the idea that the planet is not just a hunk of space rock, but is a living, conscious, sentient being. And you know, maybe it's literal, maybe it's not, but it's interesting to consider from a mythological point of view uh, because that tells us a lot about the current paradigm, right? The, the earth is like our mother, our provider, the earth mother, right? It's a feminine energy. And uh, we are not caring for her appropriately. We're supposed to be stewards and um, have not perhaps taken care of our home as best we could. And I would say one of the most widely held beliefs in New Age circles is the idea that this great awakening is meant to lead us into the golden age of humanity, the age of Aquarius. And in order to do this, we have to move out of what's called the 3D and into the 5D. And 3D is like this lower vibrational energy that um, is characterized mostly by fear, but also by greed. Um, by division, by ego. And then 5D is all about like love and um, freedom and unity. And so the idea floated in new age circles is that Gaia is moving from 3D to 5D. Some people would say she's already in 5D and her children either join her or they don't. And that's where we get this timeline split, right? Where um, half the world ends up this way and the other half is going this way. Is any of that literal? Who the fuck knows? But it's interesting to consider mythologically because the, the symbolic message there is that in these turbulent times, our future as a species is going to be determined by how many people choose to operate from a place of fear versus how many people choose to operate from a place of love. So I would say that New Age beliefs very literally account for the planet. I also think uh, like the, the whole alien thing accounts for the planet. Let me explain. When I first came to Sedona, I was so confused because I like, I think I've mentioned, I was basically just confused when I came to Sedona. But one of the things that also threw me for a loop was that people were talking a lot about aliens and UFOs. And I'm like, this is supposed to be the spiritual Mecca of the United States. Why are they talking about extraterrestrials and like contacts and full disclosure? And while I do think that there could be literal extraterrestrials out there, I think it's a very, very likely possibility. Um, again, considering it mythologically, right? And myths are attempts at answering the questions of the collective. The question has evolved as we've evolved, right? The question isn't any longer like, what's my place in the village? Or what's my country's place in the world? The question now is, uh, what is the future of this planet? And what is our place in the cosmos? That escalated quickly. Last box, science and technology, my favorite. Okay, so science and tech and spirituality, this thing and this thing, they flirted with each other, but they haven't really come together. And I think the day they do is gonna be when we really step into the prophesied age of Aquarius, even when we think about what uh, Aquarius governs, right? It is the sign of radical innovation. It is the sign of technology, of mystical healing, of brotherly love, right? If that doesn't say it all, and I think for that reason, science, technology, and spirituality 
should really be best friends. They're actually a great system of checks and balances, right? Like instead of being like, hey, there's this dude named Zeus and he throws lightning bolts from his little cloud patty, a cloud patty. We can fly up a plane and see. What if he just lives in a different dimension? But what's really cool is that a number of these of these spiritual things, we are actually figuring out how to test with the scientific method. And so there are a number of organizations in the world right now, a number of scientists who are doing the work to explore uh, what it is our ancestors knew to be truth, right? The power of intention, how to access information beyond our conventional notions of time and space, uh, the subtle energy fields that surround physical matter. And of course, all of those things are addressed in the, the New Age ideology. Instead of power of intention, we call it the law of attraction. Um, right, ability to access information beyond time and space, we talk about that when we talk about psychic abilities. Uh, the subtle energy fields, like basically everything in New Age boils down to frequency, energy, and light codes. So there you have it, how these New Age hippie beliefs are perhaps becoming a modern mythology. What do you think? I would love to have idea sex with you in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing, um, especially if you're interested in that synthesis between spirituality and science That's and technology. That's what I'm um, personally very interested in. So it makes its way onto this channel a lot. I'm very interested in how spiritual ideas are being tested in labs, um, how wisdom traditions are being used to inform innovation, all that kind of stuff. And so, if that resonates with you, join the guild. You'll fit right in. And in any case, thank you so much for having idea sex with me today. And until next time, stay blessed.